retired homicide detective. I've interviewed thousands of people, from serial killers to ministers. Welcome to the interview room. Welcome to the interview room, everybody. Woohoo! Sunday night. A lot going on. Man, oh man, craziness in this wonderful world of ours. Take a seat because we're going to go over some very interesting stuff. Lori's not crazy anymore. She's going to be going to court. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. You go cuckoo, and then you can go to the jury. Defense is going on offense. We're seeing that in Murdoff trials right now. Things are moving. Things are moving. And shh, he's right behind me. Buddy report. He's doing great. You see where they shaved on his side here? Right there. He got a thumbs up on his heart. He's doing great. He's doing great. Thank you, everybody who's been keeping him in his in your prayers. St. Patty's Day around the corner. A lot going on in this beautiful world of ours. Buster's filing police reports. Getting restraining orders. We'll see where that's going to go. Tell me where you're at. Tell me where you're at. Love the hat. Thank you, Susan. Big story behind this hat. A lot of information behind this hat. And I'll give uh, I'll give you the 411. You know, my, our dad, uh, my sister, my brother, and I, you know, our father was, uh, he fought in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam in the Marine Corps. My mother was also in the Marine Corps. And every time uh, he would either get transferred or, you know, sent out on deployment, we would go to different places. And we lived in so many different places uh, growing up as a kid. Uh, but our family is from South Boston uh, area. My grandmother lived there, 1410 uh, Columbia Road, right there at uh, uh, Cars from Carson Beach, right down the right down the way from Castle Island. So as a kid, we would go there or when we were uh, my dad was deployed on the West Coast. We would, you know, he get transferred to Kaneohe in the Marine Corps Air Station uh, out there, and we lived in Hawaii. And so my childhood, you know, bounced in a variety of these different places. But great fun, great parents, and uh, absolutely, absolutely um, love my upbringing. And, um, so, wow, a lot going on. We're going to, and thank you everybody for uh, weighing in here. I see we got everybody from from Nova Scotia to Beantown to Southie to Walla Walla. Uh, yes, what else we got here? Nova Scotia, uh, Idaho. Everybody's in the house here tonight. Everybody's in the house. And I, uh, I'm i grateful that you're here. Hey, and Josh over at the lab gave me a new sound. Check this out. Wait, I don't know if you could hear that. Listen to this. Suck a muckle. <laughs> Is that the funniest thing you've ever heard? I got to play it one more time because I may be hitting this thing a couple of times throughout the evening. Suck a muckle. Okay. Anyway, um, man, a lot going on, isn't there? A lot going on. Ireland's in the house. Thank you so much for being here. 
Um, we sure love each and every one of you guys. Um, Karen is uh, in the background. She's probably in the chat here uh, because, you know, she doesn't, uh, she said, you know what, why don't you go ahead and talk about the, the search warrant stuff and some of the other craziness going on uh, out there. And so <clears throat> there's a lot going on, isn't there? Um, now that BK has, uh, you know, he's getting love letters, um, which that, that dynamic in of itself, you got to admit, that's got to be nuts. I mean, that's crazy. So many people coming out of the woodwork to send him love letters, you know? Um, and so, you know, everybody's innocent until proven guilty here on the, on the interview room. And of course we only follow the facts and the evidence where it takes us. And so I kind of let everything settle down in relationship to, you know, when these warrants and this kind of stuff comes out right away. Um, that way, you know, people can weigh in and then eventually, you know, I'll take a look at it and give you my two cents. Not that it's worth two cents, but um, I come from a different perspective because I've actually written them. And, um, you know, I've put my name on many, many affidavits and Sometimes I see things that, uh, you know, jump out at us. But if you're new to our channel, thank you so much. We only ask one thing, and that is that you subscribe. Uh, and then if you could, if you could just pass this around on your social networks, uh, we would greatly appreciate that. I had a just an amazing meeting with our channel manager from YouTube the other night, and he says, you know, your channel's growing um, just amazingly, and, you know, keep doing what you're doing. And um, the, he's even got his team hooked on, uh, watching the interview room. So I guess that was kind of cool. That means I'm, you know, doing the right things out here, but that's because of you guys and because of our mods, uh, and our chat, how classy we try to keep it. I mean, we've got the best mods, Miss Sophia, Maui Girl, Teresa M and Mimi J2. Uh, Mimi's out with her family tonight, which is the right place to be, uh, for them. They're taking her out for dinner. And uh, we just think that's really cool. And 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 thank you so much, Classy Lash. Um, you know, we we did hit 146, and we continue to grow. So um, that is because of you, and we recognize that. Karen and I, and and Buddy over here, recognize that, and um, we we are grateful for that, and appreciate you very much. Well, you know, we've got a tremendous amount to talk about tonight, and I want to make sure that you know, we hit some of the highlights going on out here. Um, you know, what I find really interesting right now, it's, it, it appears that the hunter has become the hunted here uh, with uh, BK. You know, we've all been following this case from, you know, day one when this whole thing went down. Um, I, uh, Gary was going to try to come on tonight, but he again went out with his family. So I don't like interrupting anybody's, um, uh, personal business on behalf of, uh, YouTube, you know, family is first family's first. Uh, those of you that don't know, you know, we travel Karen and I and buddy around the country where we're in a airstream and, you know, we're fortunate enough to go to different environments and be able to report the information that we see and hear uh, directly to you. And then kind of narrow that scope down in relationship to what's true, what could be rumor, and what is actually, um, you know, on target. So we tried doing that with uh, BK here. And on behalf of, you know, Kaylee, Madison, Zana, and Ethan, uh, we like to keep thing at a, things at a top level uh, out of respect for the families, out of respect for uh, this horrific crime that's taken place. And we want to make sure that he's a, right now he's been arrested allegedly for the murder of all four of these uh, beautiful souls. And we want to make sure that he gets his day in a courtroom and that they get their day of justice just like Maggie and Paul. Uh, there's a, so much, so much coming on the horizon, even with that case. I mean, we know that the financial stuff is coming um, and there's just so much on the horizon. I can feel it. 
So I want to do a couple of things. I want to talk about, obviously, the first warrant that was sent out there a while ago, you know, dealt with, you know, shirts and, you know, a lot of that stuff that was taken back. And then, of course, we saw the the warrant from the House uh, in Pennsylvania. And by the way, I have linked in the description below the, uh, let me see if I can share this with you. Um, whoops, let me go back here. So I have linked this page for you so that you can go see it yourself. Um, this is the Idaho Judicial uh, Branch and all of the records for the BK case. So if you're not familiar with this, uh, you are tonight. And you can go there and pull this information yourself and, you know, look at the orders to seal. And these are the most interesting cases uh, in the state of Idaho. They have this whole website uh, where you guys can go do that. And so I thought, um, you know, this is obviously a, a, a national, international case. Uh, and I just think it's only appropriate that everybody know uh, where they can go and, and get the information themselves so that there is nothing that, uh, um, you know, is hidden from the public. It went blurry. I'm sorry about that, bipolar. My, it should come back. Uh, it's raining outside where I am, so that's, that may interrupt with um, a little of the uh, network here. Anyway, so <clears throat> this was from the first... Um, House in Pennsylvania, from the House in Pennsylvania. And one of the things that kind of jumped out at me, uh, well, there were a couple of them, obviously, is the Smith & Wesson pocket knife. So on the latest sealed affidavits, or not affidavits, but warrants or orders to seal, the affidavits and the warrants themselves have not been released. And best of my knowledge, um, you can go back to about 14 December when the court ordered everything sealed. So it sounds like that's when a lot of this information came back. So these sealing or, uh, orders that we're going to talk about um, are going to be related to the fact that uh, those warrants were executed pretty early uh, right after the homicides, uh, which is typical. Um, the moment they, I think they nailed down, um, you know, the possibility this, that he was involved, uh, i.e., you know, discovering the car, seeing it on video, et cetera, uh, you can bet immediately um, there was information um, popped out to the um, agencies i.e. the phone companies, uh, all of these other networks. And so, yeah, this is, there, there were clothes, there was clothing. I haven't listed all of that stuff. And, you know, there's going to be more uh, that I left, that I, I left it out on purpose because, you know, I can just say there was clothing. You know, a lot of dark clothing was, was taken in. But the couple of things that struck out to me was one, uh, a book with the underlining on page 118. I cannot wait to hear uh, what that book was. Uh, the Smith and the Smith and Wesson pocket knife. I thought that was interesting because if you go to Smith and Wesson's um, um, site, they also sell K bar knives, and of course now with the sealed warrant, they have K bar listed with variety of different models. Um, so at the time, they were onto this knife pretty quickly, and. But they were looking for the source. And then, of course, on the sealed uh, warrants, there's actually the name of the company. Uh, the, it's just the distributing company that uh, pushes those K-bars out across the country. Uh, and so my gut tells me if uh, they are a wholesaler, they sold it to Smith & Wesson. And Smith & Wesson then becomes part of this particular interest at the house in Pennsylvania. Uh, there's a gun, a Glock 40 caliber that was collected, a laptop. Um, but then we get into 
The second thing was boots, prescriptions, gloves, masks, personal identifying documents. And all of this is uh, what they're trying to do here is just show um, possession, i.e., this is really BK. And how can we show that? Well, because, you know, we have all these personal identifying documents. Uh, they took shoes just in case. Uh, what what we used to do is just, you know, put it in the search warrant. And if, and if it's something that, you know, you didn't know about, then you just take it. You just take it and put it into the inventory sheet and turn it into the judge. So multiple dark color jackets. So this tells us they were working on firsthand information. Uh, and now we know later what that firsthand information was. It was the young lady who survived and who witnessed uh, this individual. Okay. Um, he also had a, a bunch of stuff um, where he had a, a an Acer laptop, uh, which was damaged. Um, application records for a Glock 22, i.e., you have to fill that out when you go to purchase. And so I think a lot of the bank stuff that we're going to see on the ceiling of these warrants uh, is going to deal with the money trail. Uh, they're going to chase that money trail in relationship to items purchased and or subscriptions had. Uh, and you will see what that means here in a couple of minutes by going over the sealed warrants um, them, uh, themselves. But I think there's one other thing in here. They took a motherboard. They took a motherboard. And that is really interesting because what, what that tells us is they're going to basically dismantle that thing through the uh, FBI. They're going to send it back to their tech people and they're going to pull everything off of that puppy. Uh, remember, he has his undergraduate work in uh, technology. And he was moving towards, you know, wanting to train police about technology. And so this is why we're going to see, you know, information that's probably going back to, uh, you know, law enforcement agencies with the exclusion of the Moscow Police Department, their crime lab, that's put in there to seal it. Uh, they just listed that because they didn't want to uh, take any chances of any leaks coming out. Uh, the psychology books, uh, the note in the desk, we've heard that it you know, is a note to his father. Um, and of course, they're looking again for drawings, a man's drawing. Now, that's that's interesting because that could play into fantasy. Uh, if there is going to be uh, any type of essay uh, movement in this, in which we've all felt that there was, then they're going to be looking for correlating um, information that will build that fantasy. Uh, various criminal books, dark colored hats, gloves, again, you know, um, He's got a one terabit uh, solid state drive. It's a hard drive. It's probably an independent hard drive. So this is where they're going to, you know, obviously send it back to the Bureau and they will, you know, dissect it and see what's in there. And, and I would submit to you, there's going to be a significant amount of pornographic material at some point uh, in this guy's um, computer systems. Uh, two pairs of black gloves, one black knit hat, dark green shirts, sleeves. You know, they took everything uh, from the house. Uh, the motherboard, there's the motherboard, the second item down. Uh, paperwork, which is going to establish a timeline. Uh, note from Brian from Montana. I, I have no idea what that means. Uh, the Craftsman shop vac, that comes from the car. For obvious reasons, they observed him cleaning the car uh, during a surveillance. So they're they're taking that shop vac to see if there's anything else in there, um, and they will they will shop that shop vac. They will reverse engineer anything in that shop vac. 
Uh, medical documents, again, that's just showing possession that it actually is BK. There's that note from the dad. The Spiro notebook, uh, does that sound familiar, right? With the kid down in Florida. Um, there could be some writings in that stuff. Uh, dark colored clothes, uh, a printer, and the reason for that, the printer uh, is there is a storage capacity of items printed. Uh, and so you want to pull those items up to see what he was uh, printing. Uh, what else have we got? Dark clothes in the laundry basket. And then, of course, we got the uh, Taylor Cutterly knife with a uh, leather sheath. Sheath. Maybe this is item for the second, for the, for the next hit. Uh, I find this is interesting that they have a knife with another leather uh, cover on it. And, and of course, that's, you know, we don't know that for sure. But, you know, if he liked that, if it worked the first time, maybe it will work a second time. You got to think outside of the box with this guy. And of course, the buckle swab, you know, the, the cheek swabs, all of these, and then two pairs of boots. And you can throw those boots uh, under some uh, lights, uh, ALS, an alternate light source, and you could even throw them uh, into a super glue room and uh, container. It's basically a fish tank and see what comes up out of them. All right, so from the car, they took everything, even the nickels, the dimes, the quarters, the insurances, the maps, uh, used water bottles. They took the brake pedal, the gas pedal, and what they're obviously looking there is for any potential transfer uh, from the crime scene into the into the vehicle. Uh, the phone charger was really important because, as you guys know, and we all know, that you can see how many times that thing was activated and deactivated. And so if he turned his phone off in that car, yet it's still stuck into the charger, uh, you'll be able to see not only from the reading uh, if there's digital electronics in that car, that it will tell you when that phone came back on. So you'll not only have the cell phone tower pings, you'll also have the information directly from the vehicle. Uh, Band-aids for obvious reasons, you know, wrappers, maps, documents, the seatbelt boot. Um, why do you think that? Just, I think we learned just out of Murdoch, uh, they found some potential blood transfer on the seatbelt. And this is the entire boot, actually the entire mechanism where you, you seatbelt into it. They took that whole puppy, okay? And that's out of the, uh, um, the uh, Lantra, the 2015. Um, so they went through this car with a fine tooth comb. And, you know, they, they are getting down to, you know, the nitty gritty with this guy. Uh, and again, so the best I can tell reading through all of the um, the returns, i.e. The, the orders of sealing, is the majority of this took place on or before December 14th. And a lot of times it takes, as you guys can see, you know, it took almost a year for GM to send information back just during the Murdoch trial. So they hit those search warrants early and got that information out there. Okay. And so some of these major companies, uh, there are a couple of things going on here. And these are the latest seals, uh, sealed docs that we do not have the affidavit and we do not have the search warrant yet. Okay. We don't have the affidavit or the search warrant yet. But we do know who the companies were that got delivered search warrants. And a lot of this goes through when you read the uh, let me give you an example. Let me go up here for a second. Let me uh, present this real fast. Okay, so I'm going to go to one of these orders here. Pull this up. Okay, can everybody see that? All right, so the first thing up here, obviously, um, this, you know, this is a this is a sealing warrant. So it's in correlation with the search warrant. Okay. But the first thing you see up there, whoops, hang on. You're not seeing it because 
I'm not sharing the right page, so stand by. Sorry about that. All right, let's try that again. How about that? Sorry about that. So the first uh, type of information you see in the upper left-hand corner, okay, that's just correlating to the search warrant itself. The number that you want to keep an eye on is at the bottom there underneath the Apple. And what, at, what this is, this is just the security division or the custodial of records for Apple. So this is a generic address where every law enforcement agency goes to. Uh, it's in Cupertino, California, uh, up there in Silicon Valley. And, but it just goes to their uh, law enforcement division. And these are the folks that handle all of these warrants. These are the folks that come down would testify that they were the you know, custodial uh, of records for uh, Apple. And so that's the first thing you want to keep an eye on. The number underneath that Apple Inc., it says MPD case number 22-M09903. Okay, that's the magic number. Okay, that's the one you want to follow. And it's because that gives you the chain of custody of everything that these orders to seal is connected to. Okay. Everything. And, and if you want to see this yourself again, I've put the link in the um, um, description below. So I know it's small and I apologize. I can't make it any bigger. Uh, well, maybe I can. Let me see. How about that? Can you guys see that? Okay. Did that help? Yep. Okay, but you see that number, MPD, case number 22-M09903? That's the magic number. Okay, that, that's the magic number. And all of this just cor correlates to an affidavit and a return of custody sheet, i.e. things we haven't, you know, we haven't seen. But you'll see every one of these has that magic number right there, okay? Every single one of these. And right now, they're not releasing any of the information because of these four reasons. Interference with law enforcement proceedings, i.e., they're still testing everything. Uh, invasion of pro personal property, they could be connected to some of the victims. So they don't want any of that stuff out there. Okay. And disclosure of investigative techniques and procedures, meaning how did they get this stuff? Okay. How did they get this stuff? And so they don't want to reveal what their, their uh, investigative steps were to get to it. Not yet. Okay. Um, so, and then of course, disclosure of the identity of confidential sources, i.e. probably the witness and or they've got a CI, a confident informant, up alongside this guy somewhere. They could have somebody uh, up alongside him. That is a possibility. I don't know if that's, you know, what's happening here, but item number three, they do not want to release this search warrant for that reason, one of those, one of those reasons. So they could have somebody, you know, close to the problem post-incident. Uh, and so we got to keep that in mind and we have to be mindful and respectful of that and not, you know, blow this stuff out of proportion, right? Because it could get really messy. All right, so let me drop that. Let me pull up another one here. Okay, so it looks like uh, AT and T got hit with three of them for uh, for various reasons, uh, different states, um, different geographic regions, and then the main one uh, back in you know AT and T headquarters, where uh, the 
the main mother load could be. So basically what happens sometimes is you'll talk to the um, uh, investigative you know, arm or the custodial of records at the agency, i.e. AT&T, and say, hey, we, we're sending you a, a search warrant and you can do it either fax and or email nowadays. And we need everything on these phone numbers and or this this address you know if they had if they had hardwire system you know wi-fi into the into the house if they had various phones all of that information is going to come back uh in these particular warrants sometimes they'll let you you know individually uh, list a single phone number sometimes they'll do multiples it's completely up to them uh, and how they operate sometimes uh, Bank of America, for obvious reasons, Banner Bank, uh, all of this, Square, Block, it are they're chasing the money. They're, they're trying to see, you know, if he did buy this knife, and you see Blue Ridge Knives in Marion, Virginia, that is a knife wholesaler. And they have a whole section on military knives and K-bars. But so does Smith & Wesson. They not only sell guns, but they sell knives. So the question is, is Blue Ridge Knives a wholesaler? And if so, who are they selling to? Uh, Charter Communications, again, that's another, you know, uh, telecommunications company that could be for Wi-Fi into the victim's houses. Uh, that could be Wi-Fi into the neighborhood. Uh, anything like that where they're trying to see if his signal got picked up. Quarter Lane Forensic PD Lab, uh, that's just to keep them out of the limelight and let nobody get anything that they did out into the public. So they've ordered that, anything that came out of that lab sealed. The same with the banks. Again, they're chasing the money. They're chasing the money. Okay. Uh, credit Union. Again, bank, Wells Fargo, Verizon Wireless, for obvious reasons, and then WSU. Now, here's the one that I thought was really interesting. Because remember, we talked about 0.5, five-tenths of a mile from this guy's house was a jack-in-the-box. We did a, whole, did a whole program on it. I find it interesting that they hit DoorDash and now they're sealing it because she gets that DoorDash at 0400. And right after that DoorDash, this whole thing goes down. So they have sealed any information related to DoorDash. So my question was, and what do you guys think? Did he do it? I mean, did he did did he have this thing so planned out that, you know, he sent the DoorDash at four o'clock in the morning because at zero two forty five um was the I think was the time in and uh Karen keep me honest, was it two forty five in the morning when the DoorDash shut off? I think it I think it's two forty five because I spoke we spoke to the manager at uh that jack-in-the-box, five-tenths of a mile from his house. And I, I found it interesting that at 0247, his phone goes dark, goes off the grid. We'll call it the Murdoch effect. It goes off the grid. They get the they get the delivery at four o'clock a.m. His car shows up at four o four, coming back up the street. On video. I don't know. It may be nothing, uh, but I find it really interesting uh, that it may correlate to some of his activity going on that night because they they obviously thought it was suspicious because they're they're now trying to seal it from. Um, you know, the public for obvious reasons, right? We don't know if they, there's a lot more behind that one. Uh, cloud company, um, for obvious reasons, you know, they want to pull anything off of that. They can, 
And then Google, you know, go ogle, as my brother calls it, go ogle. Uh, they want they want any type of data points that they may have, and which we know they have everything. Whether they share it or not is a different story, uh, but they have everything about us. Um, then, of course, inland cellular cellu 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 cellular. <laughs> wow, I'm a tongue twister here tonight. Sorry, hang on. K bar knives. for obvious reasons. But this one I I think should raise a lot of concerns because uh, Match Group is, the, is a company that is an owner of 45 different um, dating sites. Yeah, I think you're right, Coco. I think you're right. Yeah, because Blue Ridge is a wholesaler, but I think you may be right onto something there. Cindy says, I think he's connected to the DoorDash. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, I don't want to uh, get lost here. But anyway, they uh, match group 45 different dating sites. And look, look who they run primarily. And these are the companies that um, are in their portfolio. Tinder, Match.com. Uh, Medic, I, I'd never even heard of that one. Or OKCupid, okay Hinge, uh, Plenty of Fish, Our Time. Man, I, I'm so glad I'm happily married. I, you know, God bless you folks that that um, have found the right human being on this, but. The other side of this is uh, it could be Brian Corp, you know, BK on the other end. Um, <clears throat> so now the interesting thing about the 245 4 a.m. delivery is you can schedule the delivery by 245 to be delivered at 4 a.m. Isn't that interesting? But you have to have it in by 245. So my theory was if he had done that, he got it in early, you know, just before 245. And then he shut it down. He shut it down at 247. That's when his phone went, went off, right? You know, that's when his phone went off. You know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I could be a thousand percent wrong on that one. Uh, but, you know, the fact that DoorDash is showing up on their sealing warrant or uh, order and they're asking the judge, look, you know, we want to keep this one quiet. You know, I, like Miss Corgi, find it very interesting. I find it very interesting. Uh, and, you know, so... Let's see how that one unfolds, right? But look at all the different sites they're also looking for. So they're they're trying to do a couple of things. I think we all understand, and you guys would uh, agree, but keep me honest, right? I mean, correct me if you guys feel that I'm wrong. Not a problem. He was, you know, he was out there just trolling. And remember, you know, we talked about this a, a long time ago that if he's out there just, you know, searching for a victim, and this has been something that's been going on for quite some time in his head, um, again, you know, that he was going to be the punisher of, of the persons and people in his own, you know, demented way, that, you know, the only place to get that right now is to go out into the social media world. And try to find that victimology that fits him and then find a purpose within that victimology as the punisher and you know get a fixation on somebody right to get a fixation 
Uh, I think this guy has uh, incel tendencies uh, where the wind blows, but I think he's deeper than that. Uh, the, because, you know, incels typically, right? I mean, and we, we see what Elliot Rogers did. You know, he, he wasn't, he had a manifesto. He wasn't ashamed to go around and tell everybody just everything that he did. Okay. But not BK. BK, in my opinion, you know, wanted to do, uh, I, I, I agree with you that he had some incel tendencies. No question about that. I agree with you a thousand percent. Uh, but yeah, exactly. He was more than this guy, than Elliot. You're, I agree with you there too. Uh, because, you know, the, he was at a much more intellectual level, like Ava says. I agree. Um, he was just what Wiss says. He's a hateful dude who keeps it inside. Yes. And Dr. Gary, uh, again, guys, if you get a chance, go back and watch uh, Dr. Picado's assessment of this guy because, man, oh, man, he nailed it. He nailed it. And one of the things that Gary said that I thought was really interesting was the fact that he had targeted um, probably one, if not the three girls, if not all of the girls in that particular residence. And that unfortunately, Ethan um, was there that night. And we talked offline at that length for hours about, you know, the fantasy mechanisms of these individuals. And I've seen enough of them and interviewed enough of them that he, this guy was, he was dialed up and was in motion that evening to do this particular crime. He was dialed up. Okay. And he went in there with a specific purpose, uh, which we're learning potentially. Yes, he is on the dark triad. No question about it, Karen. Good observation. This guy, you know, he was and is a very dangerous individual if he's responsible for these horrific homicides. And, and right now he's been charged, uh, but he's not been convicted. We can now say that Alec Murdoch is a convicted murderer of his family. Okay. Um, here's the other companies, Facebook, Moscow PD, they, they, they sealed themselves. And that's to go along with the, you know, we can no longer talk to you, you know, problem. Which, you know, if you don't feed the beast, the beast will come looking and eat you. What I mean by that is the, the media or the public. Because the public wants to know. I mean, just look what just happened here in South Carolina. The public wants to know, and they have a right to know, as long as it doesn't jeopardize the investigation and or the court proceedings. And at this point, you know, the guy's been in custody. He's got a new lawyer because it's a death penalty. You know, they're going to give him a team of lawyers. Uh, and, you know, everybody will be able to, uh, you know, have, watch another unbelievable trial. That's going to be the next big one. Um, meaning on top of Lori and Chad and all the, you know, the kooks. And uh, the wackadoodles, getting them out of the way first. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we've got the finance stuff here. I'm going to get that out of the way. I'm going to get some justice, you know, for other families. There are going to be other cases opening up, Stephen Smith and all that stuff in South Carolina. So that uh, that that's just going to go to Chapter 2. There's going to be more books written. 
Uh, here they're looking for the paying mechanisms for obvious reasons, Pen, uh, PayPal, Venmo, and I'm assuming Reddit is connected to some of the uh, online information that was presented there. Snapchat, they want to see what's out there, what's left, if they can grab it. Again, chasing the money, UPS, did you deliver a knife? That's what they're looking for there. That's exactly what they're looking for there. Yeah, Larry Miliate, yeah, another wackadoodle. You know, crazy guy who's putting spells on his, on his sweet wife. And by the way, uh, behind the scenes, he also did it to his children. He put some of the uh, subliminal messaging networks in his kid's room, if you can believe that. That's going to come out in the civil stuff that they're trying to sue. You know, Larry's parents are trying to sue the police department. And there are things taking place on that side of the coin. Can you believe that? He not only puts it into his wife's environment, but he puts it into his children's environment. So... Um, Don, I want to answer this here. I, I do believe that these are his first murders. I really do. That's just my opinion. Um, let me see here. Yeah. I mean, the kids in, in Larry's case, you know, poor Maya's children. I, I couldn't believe it when I, when, um, uh, I heard that. And it's real. Trust me. It's real. Walmart, they wanted to see if, <clears throat> you know, for obvious reasons, any of the clothing, anything like that. So what they're trying to do is you're just chasing the money. And all of these sealed warrants or orders are connected to a warrant. And they're connected back to the victims. And they're connected to the totality of the of the crime not only you know each and every one of you know the four victims in this case but anything in the environment anything in the environment uh yahoo um can somebody tell me what yik yak is i saw yik yak and 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 i immediately i thought of alec uh when he said you know Yik yak or you know yip yap or remember when he said that? <laughs> I thought, what the heck is this yik yak? Maybe uh, you folks are a lot smarter than me out there, and I I love you guys. <laughs> so can you educate me on this one, please? Uh, is it a chat app? Okay, Shav is saying it's a chat. Is it is it like Snapchat then? Like TikTok? Sav, can you uh, help me out there on this one? But yik yak, you know, say that five times real fast. See how see how well you do. Remember that as a kid. Say that ten times. <laughs> yik yak yik yak yik. <laughs> Who knows where where that's going to go? Wait a minute. Suck a muckle. <laughs> exactly. I don't know what yik yak is. Okay, well, we get that one. Uh, oh, you, okay, let's see here. Let you connect to people who are close to you. Okay, see, we learn every single day. That is awesome. Uh, all right, Jules got one. Yik Yak is a social media smartphone application that initially launched in 2013 and relaunched in 2021. Okay. I'd never heard of it. Social media network. Thank you, Maui. Okay, makes 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 sense now. They're trying to see if uh, he played up into that one. Oh, look at this. Is a social media app that connects people within a five mile radius of each other. Oh, ho, ho. interesting. That is interesting. All right, so this is one of the reasons why this is on this list. 
they're looking for radius information. If he had, I would submit to you, if he had ever gone onto the campus and if somehow he got a connection to anybody, I, w I don't know how it works, but um, it's just interesting. I'll tell you, technology today is uh, pretty dangerous, pretty dangerous. Whoops. All right, let's go to the next one. I found this one. I put these two pictures up for interesting observation. This is on the side of the house, the one on the right, where the investigators were looking right during, you know, early. Uh, Gwen says it's dangerous too. So guys, take a, take notice. It sounds like that one's not really a good one, especially, you know, our young, our young folks out there, please be careful. Please be careful. You know, if I wanted you guys to see about the eyes, you know, if, if we look at, I can't, I can't tell you how many times uh, I've looked into those eyes of somebody who's taken another human being's life. And if you look at the eyes on all four of these individuals and you just look at the blank stare, and I put the little joke over on the side, remember when you're burying a body, cover it with endangered plants so it's illegal to dig it up. And you can follow me for more gardening tips if you need to. Please like and subscribe is all I would ask. But it, I had to put some humor in there to lighten up the wackadoodles on the right side of the page. And I wanted us to see what BK looked like in relationship to Chad, Brandon, and now Alec. Hey, I have to tell you, one of the creepiest things that ever happened to me in my career was with the guy on the lower left-hand corner. And as I was interviewing, and I spent like six hours in the room with him, and this was the kid that finally demonstrated to me, you know, how he had uh, did, what, uh, did what he did. But in, the, in, in between it, uh, he stopped in, a, in between our conversation, like two and a half hours in. And just after I had gotten him through, you know, the demonstration on showing me, you know, how he committed his crimes, he, uh, within, you know, four or five minutes, we took a break. I came out, got some water. And man, that room was ice cold. And I mean this, it was cold. That room had a temperature change. And we came out and Tom... His name is Tom Morgans, uh, the detective that was with me, one of my partners. He looks at me and he goes, dude, he said, did you feel that? And I said, yeah, tell me about it. That was weird. And he goes, dude, he said, that's pure evil. I said, yeah, I know. I felt it. And so where, I was, where I'm going with this is I went back in the room with him. And he was looking at me with those eyes in the lower left-hand corner. And I said to myself, holy cow, this guy's got something else going in here. And I swear to you, he stops. And I don't tell this story very often. I, now that I'm on YouTube, I'll, I can, I'll tell it. <clears throat> but he looked at me, and it's on video. And he says, you know who I am. And I looked over at him, and I swear, every hair on my arm my neck i mean if i if i look like josh over in the lab my my bun would have gone straight up in the air 
And I got this so evil feeling. And I looked at him and I said, uh, yeah, I know who you are. And I looked over at Tom and I said, let's go. Let's take a break. And we walked out of the room again. I'm telling you, if you look at these guys' eyes, and there's been, there has been studies that show that when these guys go ready to go off, like serials and, and you know, killers of a deep emotional dysfunction and, and depth, that they, their eyes change. And they, they project this evil persona. Now, if you, if you want to see what this guy did with Brandon, you can, yeah, I have it in one of the uh, place, place, you know, playlist. But I'm going to warn you, you got to be careful watching because he is pure evil. But I got that sense with Alec when we saw him on those uh, videos, you know, when the officers first got there. We definitely get that sense with the upper left-hand wackadoodle, Chad. I mean, I don't know about you, but that elevator does not go to the top floor. It has stopped uh, at various floors on the way up. And he's picked up a lot of baggage, a lot of baggage inside of that head. And then you look over at Brian, and he has the same look as Brandon. Just a matter of fact. And the reason I put these four up here is when we look at BK and you look at Brandon Wilson, BW, on the lower left corner, when you see them in court, they're all like Chad wearing a real nice shirt with a tie or like, you know, Alec down there and his everyday, you know, look. But when you see what Brandon did and how he did it, then you can see through the eyes of the victim and what they experienced and what they experienced. So don't be confused. I guess, you know, we need to somehow help people still recognize that, that sometimes it's a moral di dilemma, right? Yes, exactly. Ted Bundy had those eyes too. And in fact, Sullivan said that uh, the other night when he was on, Kevin was talking about how Ted's eyes would change and, and, you know, it's just, I think it's consistent. It really is. And I, I've spoke to a lot of these guys and interviewed a lot of them. Um, and they, and they are there, there is good and evil in this world. I don't care what anybody says. And this is a real fight uh, for the moral soul of individuals. And these guys, sometimes they just don't, they, they pass go and they don't collect $200. They, they're just evil. And you can't describe them any other way Be, because they are. They are out there and, uh, you know, it's scary stuff. Okay, enough enough of the, uh, the shady bunch here. Drop down here. All right, let's get into some uh, thoughts that you guys may have. Uh, throw up a couple of questions in here. And if you want to see the Brandon Wilson interview, thank you, Maui. There it is. Um, you can click on that link and go over. Oh, yes. How could I have forgotten him? Thank you, Danielle. Yeah. Exactly. Let's see. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it is, it's, it's, it's this predatorial, hungry predatorial look they get. And I, I got to tell you that a lot of times, and sometimes this is controversial when I say this, and I'm not trying to be con controversial in any way, shape or form. I, you know, I'm not that kind of guy. Okay. 
I'm not that kind of guy. But, you know, there is such a... access to fuel for fantasies, hardcore pornography, that kind of stuff. It's, it's just perpetuating this, this problem at, at levels and, and at depths that I don't think we can understand yet. Uh, I guarantee you there will be stuff in BK's, uh, computers there will be stuff on there and whether you know people liked it or not when ted bundy interviewed you know just before his death with dobson who by the way is not a preacher he was a psychologist everybody kind of gets that wrong and he said look you know the the access point that i had was you know all of the detective magazines and the the stuff back in the day you know, we have shifted, we have shifted to in such a, such levels that, um, the stuff that used to be behind, um, <laughs> thank you, Jess. I, I hope so. I'm, uh, I'm one of the good guys. <laughs> guys can look, yeah. <laughs> I, I've been around these guys so much that uh, it saddens me because I'm worried about the children. I'm worried about what comes next, you know, for the availability of this fuel uh, with the metaverse on the horizon, with all of these technological advances on the horizon. If we, if we as good people, uh, to, and anybody, you know, forget the political side of stuff. We're all human beings and we're all brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter what, you know, what we're into. What matters is how we see it and how we treat each other. And these guys are so immersed into this addictive behavior that it becomes way um, controlling and then you add some of these other, and I, and by the way, I, in no way, shape, or form, am I a psychologist, right? I don't, I have no idea. There are many psychologists in the, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, chat here tonight, uh, you know, who are going to be able to tell us a lot more than I could tell you. And Dr. Gary and all those guys, you know, there are a lot. I listen to them and I put my, my fruit down at their feet. But I've worked over, you know, 300 murders and a couple of hundred suicides and naturals. I've seen what the human spirit is capable of doing. And Buddy's waking up over there. Hey, bud. <laughs> He's a nut job. Thank you, Hope. <clears throat> Where was I going with this? Well, we have got to somehow figure out how to put the genie back in the bottle in terms of letting adults be adults and children be children and regulate their access points to the materials that are available in today's world. Um, as you guys know, if you're, as you know, my claim to fame is I, I did the predictive analysis in relationship to what was called the advent of the white collar predatorial behavior. That was in 1993 to 1995 of some work that I was involved in. And I predicted that we would see an uptick in intellectual white collar predators because of the first advent of the internet in 1993. And lo and behold, 1995 came along and everything broke loose because that was the first time a photograph was ever trans, you know, sent over the, the internet. And 1998 came around and my phone went off the hook because I was, at the time, I was even 
you know, going around training on it that we would see, you know, from a predictive analysis as point, you know, aspect that um, we would start seeing more intellectuals coming into the game because of chat rooms and all the stuff that had started to happen. Well, I'm here to tell you today in 2023, we have surpassed that by a hundredfold. And in 98, when I think it was to catch a predator or something like that, and the doctors, lawyers, cops, you name it, they all started showing up from hundreds of miles to go for a victimology of a 12 or 13 year old. I was on the ground floor of that about five years before it occurred or four year, four and a half years before it occurred. And that became uh, what I was known for. And that was my, my background in criminal behavior analysis and relationship to pedophilia for sexual deviant behavior, i.e. guys who kill children for sexual gratification. <clears throat> that was my game. And that's why when you read my bio, it said I was involved in these other, you know, a lot of these high profile cases. That's because I was behind the scenes because I was teaching this stuff back then. And of course, you know, other, you know, much smarter people than I, like Gary, like Dr. Simons, like Marion O'Toole, like, um, you know, Ann Burgess, who's been on my show. Mary's been on, uh, Mary hasn't been on my show, but Greg and all those. They say the eyes are the window of the soul. Their souls are truly black. I concur, I concur with that. I concur with that. And thank you, Benny. Can you sense if someone is capable of evil? No. Unfortunately, you can't. You can't. You can't sense it. You can sense if you're, you sense that there's something off. Yes, you can sense that. And every woman has that sense. And you need to continue to follow it because you're right. You are right. Continue to follow it. Do not discount it. Okay. Let's see here. Curious, the, they're requesting video from UPS delivery trucks to the Moscow residents, not in the Washington. Well, and that that's an interesting uh, observation. They're probably looking for video of any type of surveillance if his car's in that area, going up and down those streets. Animals can sense it, yes. Intuition, that's right. And and guys, you know, guys, we have to learn it. I mean, let's be honest, right? Uh, I've talked about this a hundred times. You know, my wife will pick up something and and I won't necessarily catch it, right? I won't necessarily catch it, but she did. And she's right. And I've learned to respect that, honor that, and listen to it. Uh, and all that all of the women around listening to this chat, I know that you would agree with me. So we have to follow, they, the guys have to follow the instincts of those around us that we love. You have to. And you need to follow your instincts because you're right. I can't tell you how many victims I've talked to that have told me, you know, I just didn't have a good feeling about this, this, and this, but for some reason I just needed to, you know, I ignored it. And, you know, as one of the things I, we tell, I told my daughter and I've told my grandchildren about men and Karen has this analogy too. She says, but boys are like buses. They're right on time, i.e. on schedule. And if you miss one, don't worry, there's another one coming right behind you. But before you get on that bus, do one thing, lift the baggage compartment to see what's in there. And if there's a bunch of coolers with duct tape and you know handlebars and all that other stuff, you may want to get on another bus. But if you see Gucci bags and all this other stuff, she jokes then uh, you may be interested in that bus. It's up to you, but you get to choose. What you cannot do is fix the wheels when they come off of the cooler. They're broken. You cannot fix them. 
So think about that. And of course, my daughter growing up, you know, our daughter was like, you know, dad, you know, blah, blah, blah. You're always analyzing my boyfriends. Yeah, but she married a great guy. <laughs> you know, yay. Okay. And now we have five grandkids that are being raised by great parents. And it just keeps on going. So boys are like buses, teacher, teacher kids, teacher grandkids. And that's Karen's analogy. I give her full credit. All right, let's see here. Thank you, Susan. All right, what else we got here? Yeah, that's true, you can't fix them. There you go. Uh, Karen is so smart. She's very smart. Always look under the hood. I love that one, too. Good for you. All right, so we are an hour and 15 minutes into this. What do you guys think? How's, how are things? Uh, you got any questions tonight on what we just went over? What do you think about um, old crazy Lori now getting ready to go back to, to trial? I guess she's uh, she's pretty normal now, right? Uh, let's see here. Do you think BT, BK took Kaylee's phone? I didn't see her phone listed in the documents. It doesn't, you know, I don't, I can't answer that um, because it wasn't there. It uh, doesn't mean, be, remember that, that search warrant was a full dump. Uh, I saw her name listed a whole bunch of times in there. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Christy Fox, for your service. Hopefully you got your three first three percent at fifty and got out of there. Uh, another wackadoodle. Yeah, she is, isn't she? Is so Chad's throwing her under the bus. This is going to be really interesting to see. It's going to be really interesting because, you know, these children were dismembered, and oh my gosh, you know. How's that all going to unfold, right? Um, let's see here. Any updates on Troy? Yeah, actually, there was a court hearing last week, and they're going after the financial stuff. So those kids are going to have a problem over there, both uh, Dale and Troy. It's going to be a problem. Put your seatbelts on. We're gonna, we'll have Billy back when... Uh, there's some more stuff coming. There's some. He's doing some great stuff. Uh, I can't talk about it, but he's out there, you know, wearing his cape and saving saving America in in his way. He's he's a really really smart guy. And uh, thank you so much for that kindness. You're very nice. Um. Yeah, and, and you got to think about this one, right? Where everybody goes. Well, you know, how could how could Alec just shoot his son. I don't understand that. The same way Lori let her kids be dismembered. You know, there are just crazy people out there who look normal, uh, which goes back to the other, you know, point early on. You can't tell what evil looks like. Evil comes in all different packages. All different directions, too. All different directions. Uh, this is pushed out. Uh, Larry's trial's pushed out a little. He just had his uh, preliminary hearing. He was bound over. And the court said, uh, yep, there's enough probable cause to believe you killed your wife. You're going to trial. So we'll see how that's going to go. Okay. Yeah, this is another one. Chris Watts with, and his, and with his children. I mean, to put them in, you know, three different oil bats, you know, just, I mean, what a sick puppy. But when you look at that video and you watch him, okay, uh, he's just like, you know, oh, well, you know, I remember this one here when, when he discovered that uh, his neighbor had, uh, you know, the video of his uh, truck backing up. That was a moment. And kudos to that officer for keeping that body camera going, right? Or else he, you know, we wouldn't have that reaction 
to take a look at it, to take a look at it. Um, there is no question, Blue Peach, that we agree with you. AM was at the scene, no question. So was his brother. Um, and I just answered this one here. Uh, Maria, Larry was just uh, bound over and he's going to trial for her death. Okay. Yeah. You know, one of the one of the craziest cases I, I also had, well, I mean, just some serious weirdness. And I and I've shared this one before where a guy walked up and this was a gang situation, but the, the father wasn't even a gang member. He was in his in the field, you know, just baseball fields with his kids. And the guy walked up on him and shot him because he was wearing a red hat. And that suspect's name was Quilly Harvey. And I hooked him up and I asked him, I said, why did you shoot that guy? He goes, and quote, he says, I didn't like the color of his hat. That was it. That's all it took, the color of his hat. And now if we look at what's going on in this world today, you know, with the advent of fentanyl and, and all of the addiction problems where, you know, people are struggling, right? And remember, you know, my philosophy about narcotics and drugs are, you know, they're, they're killing pain. Uh, to these poor people, but at the same time, these people are, you know, if afflicting themselves, they're making choices, they're making choices. And as a result of that fentanyl, do you realize that fentanyl has killed over a hundred thousand people in this country? That's more than the Vietnam war in 10 years. If I think we had like 58,000 people killed in 10 years in Vietnam. And yet we had 100,000 people last year, and it's, that number is going to go even higher this year because of the fentanyl problem. We've got to do something. Something's got to be done. And I don't have those answers. I don't have those answers personally. But something's got to be done. It has to be done because we're losing a lot of people in this country. The fight has to come from the ground. It has to come from people like us to say enough is enough. Stop this. Um, you know, look at the three Americans or the four Americans that were just, you know, kidnapped over the border because they thought, you know, they were somebody else. You know, the last time that happened is years ago when the Cardinal from Mexico City flew into Tijuana and they killed the Cardinal thinking it was one of uh, the Arellano brothers back in the days of the cocaine cowboys, okay? back in the days from the cocaine cowboys. And they, they killed the, uh, the Cardinal thinking it was uh, one of the uh, other cartel members coming in. That's the other thing, you know, people, we forget that back in the day, there were two major places where drugs were coming into this country. One of them was up through Miami uh, from the Colombians. And then of course it was always up through, you know, um, Mexico as a whole, not necessarily through BC, not through Baja, but up through Me Mexico, right? And those those corridors are still open, but now it's 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 beyond understanding, and people are dying. People are dying on these streets in the United States. And it just seems somehow we got to get a handle on this. We've all got to come together and say, look, uh, enough is enough. Because at some point, it's going to affect somebody in your circle. It will. It just will. It just will. So, you know, these people that, are, that, that have gone over the border to get their medications, to go down, you know, to, you know, surgeries and, and all the other medical stuff in which these folks you know, recently did, well, you saw the result. And now the cartels are coming back and saying, oh, we're sorry. You know, we killed the wrong people. We thought they were connected to another cartel. What? You know, and, we're, and we as a country are just going to sit by and say, thank you very much. Man, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is. I'm not a politician. I'm not talking about, you know, if they can fix it. I can just tell you this, something needs to happen. 
Every one of us needs to get involved, and it doesn't matter. It does not matter what type of uh, political standing we each have. We're all human beings first. We need to put the other stuff aside and get a handle on it. Because this year, if we lose another 100,000, think about that. That's 200,000 people. Just look at any city in the United States of America with a population of 200,000. And that's how many people died. You wiped out entire cities. You were wiping out entire cities. And with every one victim, there are at least 15 or 20 behind them who are suffering. It does not go away. We need to have a, a, a humanitarian wake up because that's this country is, uh, you know, we just need to. We need to be better people on both sides of the coin. And it doesn't matter what country we're from or where we're from. We just need to treat each other with a lot more dignity. And hopefully, hopefully, somebody will catch up with us. So with that, I hope you guys have a blessed uh, rest of your evening tonight. we got a lot more coming next week. And let me tell you, you're not going to want to miss next week. I got a guest. I'm not going to tell you who it is. <laughs> because uh, it's going to be big and uh, you're not going to want to miss it. I'll, I'll have a couple of shows in between this week as well. Uh, so again, we thank you so much for everything that you do. Continue to be kind one to another. I'll try to do my best uh, as well, uh, even though I fall short on many occasions myself, but at least we can keep getting up and trying. And um, as long as we can do that, there's the old saying, no man got to the top of the mountain by falling there. So hopefully we can walk up to the top of the mountain together. And uh, the first thing we can do is just telling each other thank you and uh, treating each other with a little more dignity. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Aloha. Hard work in every day. I'm stressed out. 24-7, babe No, no timeouts Wish we could fly away You and I Go to our favorite place Oh, yeah, yeah Make special memories Together I'll be your company Now and forever I say we fly away You and me Go to our favorite place Facing a wall Facing a wall.